Hello, and welcome to a sewing edition of the Knit and Grace podcast. Welcome or welcome back if you are a returning viewer. If you are new here, my name is Mia and I am the maker behind In Grace. And today I am bringing you a special sewing episode of the podcast. So I put one of these out at the end of July, I want to say, um, when I had a lot of sewing to show you all. And so I figured that I would put out another one since I have done quite a bit of sewing since then. Um, and then this is a way for me to sort of separate these out from my regular knitting podcast episodes. Um, so if you did not watch the last one, I will definitely link it up above if you're interested. Uh, but I kind of did it in the same fashion as my regular podcast episodes where I show you all the things that I made. I talk about anything that I'm currently working on um, and any future plans that I have. So I figured I'll probably put out a couple of these a few times a year. And then um, since I do do a lot of sewing and then anything that is sort of sewing that is knitting related, like my project bags and things like that, I'll continue to show in my regular knitting podcast episodes. So today I'm going to show you um, everything that I've made since the last episode in July, um, talk about my fall sewing plans, some winter sewing plans. Um, I may not have another one of these videos probably until like early in the year next year, um, since I don't have too too many plans as of right now um, and then if you are a only interested in the knitting podcast then you can come back next week for my regular knitting podcast episode so I'll go ahead and get started and before I do I do want to uh, let you all know if you haven't already um, noticed and hopefully it's not too bad but I do have the windows open it is a beautiful day here um, we've had non-stop rain for like the last week so I do have the windows open if there are any nature sounds I think you can hear like you know all the nature sounds the crickets and cicadas and things like that um and yeah so I have I actually brought up a clothes rack today and I have all of the various things that I made and I will go ahead and walk you through them um Another thing that I'm trying to be good about since my last episode and just in general with my sewing is documenting everything in a notebook um, because unlike with my knitting where I document everything on Ravelry, I don't often have places to sort of document the stuff um, that I make on, um, you know, somewhere and then if I want to make it again I don't necessarily always know the alterations that I made or anything like that unless I um, posted them to Instagram so um, yeah I will go ahead and start with what I'm wearing um, which you can't really see too much but I am wearing the Cielo dress um, and this is by I'm already failing. I'm already failing. And this is an older project, so I don't have too much info on it. I do. I am pretty sure that I posted about it on my Instagram. So let's see. 
um, what I can find on the Instagram about my dress. Okay, I'm back. I found the post on my Instagram, which I'll also insert the picture of me wearing this dress so that you all can see what it looks like on since, you know, I'm pretty close to the camera. Um, but I am wearing this yellow dress by Closet Core Patterns, and I made this in the size 16. And so this is a pattern that is both a top and a dress. Um, and the, let's see. I shortened the bodice by one inch. Um, I think that's the only modification that I made to the dress. And um, this is sewn up in just a 100% linen that I bought from Joanne many years ago. And so I love this dress and I'm actually going to talk about this in my future making plan. So I figured I would throw it on today. But um, this is a really great uh, sort of spring, summer and even early fall uh, dress for me. Like now when it's still pretty warm, um, you know, I made it over the pandemic. Um, um, I'm not sure when I finished this one. Um, it must have been sometime in 2021 um, that I worked this dress up. And yeah, I absolutely love it. It fits great. Um, it's just like a boxy fit. So it's like nice and boxy around my waist. And I still have some positive ease at my hips and some positive ease at my chest. And it's kind of just a really nice dress. I can pair it with loafers to go into the office or sandals if I'm out and about. So great dress um, that I'm going to talk about a little bit more later in terms of my making plans. But that is what I'm wearing today. I will go ahead and get started with uh, what I finished. And so you're going to notice that there are a lot of repeats in here. Um, and yeah, there's just a lot of repeats in here that I will go through and uh, tell you all what I made for the past couple months. Okay, um, so I'm gonna start with the set of three Phoebe linen tank um, that I made and I will show you all this. I think I hear an airplane going by. Hopefully the camera's not picking that up. Um, but I'll start with the first one that I finished, which is this yellow version. And so if you are a watcher of the podcast, you know that I had a black version or still have a black linen version of this top that I have worn to death. And I've worn it so many times. It's a great layering piece. And I thought it was about time that I made another one and I ended up making three. Um, this is also part of my Rhinebeck outfit for this year. Um, and so I, you know, I already had plans to make some. I had some scrap fabrics and I wanted to go ahead and go ahead and, you know, make a couple more. So this is the first one that I made. Um, so again, it's the Phoebe Linen Tank. This is a free pattern. Um, from the fabric store.com and yeah it is a boxy fit tank so as you can see there are no bust starts it's just you know a regular tank and um, this is a really great project it is um, sort of marketed on their website as a one yard project which I 100% agree with I use about three quarters of a yard for mine because I um, I crop mine because I usually wear them as layering pieces. Um, so I get about three quarters of a yard for mine again, cause I crop them. And then another thing that I do with mine, because I tend to use, usually make these out of scrap fabric is that I will cut the back on the, you know, instead of on the folds, I'll actually cut um, the back in two pieces and seam them together and you know just add in a seam allowance when I cut the back piece out so that way I don't have to cut on the fold which means that I can actually you know that's why I can get um, a tank top out of three quarters of a yard of fabric. In terms of this particular fabric, this is the Joanne Linen Look, which is an 85% rayon, 15% linen in the color Honey. Um, and let's see, the modifications, and so this is the modifications for all three of the ones that I'm showing you today, 
are that I have decreased the arm size by uh, one and a half inches. Yep. I have decreased the arm size by one and a half inches. Um, so there's that. And then I've also shortened the top by three inches for a crop length. Um, if I wanted a regular length, I would actually leave the three inches in. Um, it's actually a very comfortable fit with the three inches in for a regular length tank. But because I wanted crop length for these specific ones, I did crop the body by three inches. Um, in terms of additional details for this one, I did, what size did I make? I made the size 20 slash 22. And for reference, I have a 46 inch bust. Um, and I'm just looking down at my notes. Um, let's see. I like to use, um, I make my own bias binding and I like to do it through like a continuous bias binding method. I will link my favorite video down below if you want to take a look at that one. Um, and it's just a way for me to use scrap bits of fabric that I might have that I can make into bias binding for other projects or even for a project like this um, that's a scrap bust buster project. I can easily make bias binding out of smaller squares um, of um, fabric without having to cut into a diagonal. And so for these, um, an 11 inch square gives me enough uh, bias binding for this project, um, which the project does call for one and a half inch bias tape. Um, so that, that's the details for all three of these. So um, in terms of modifications, sizing, and how I go about making the bias um, tape. So I'll go ahead and show you the next one that I made. So the next one that I made is actually um, from fabric that I had left over from my birthday dress that I made, um, which was featured in the last episode. And so this fabric is uh, from Merchant at Mills and it is their Louisiana linen. So this is 100% linen and it is very lightweight, um, just like the, um, the Joanne linen rayon blend. Um, I would actually say they're about the same in terms of weight. Um, and yeah, so again, same modifications where I cut the back on the fold. I mean, not on the fold and I just, um, add in the seam allowance. I actually am really proud of myself for my, where's my seam here? My seam is right here. I did pretty good pattern matching there. I'm very proud of myself, um, for doing that. And yeah. So again, this one um, literally was bits and pieces. So this is actually cut from the fabric going in two different directions because I didn't have enough from the fabric in one same direction. Um, so I think the front is the fabric going up and down the way that it's meant to be. And the back I actually cut with the fabric side to side. Um, but because it's the front and the back, you can't, you know, you can't really tell the difference. Um, and yeah, that is that one. And then the last one that I made, which is my official Rhinebeck outfit, um, make is this beautiful blue, um, linen cotton. This is the Kaufman Essex linen cotton blend. Um, which I believe is 55% cotton and 45% linen. Um, but it's just the Kaufman, you know, Essex linen. So it's their regular linen. Um, and again, same modifications as the other ones where I, you know, cut the back on the, I cut it flat instead of on the fold. And yeah, and again, I, you know, use the same method to make the bias tape out of the same fabric. So those are my three Phoebe linen tank um, from thefabricstore.com. So the next project that I have to show you, I'm so excited for, and again, it's one that I made multiple of, I happen to make two of, um, and they are the Chanterelle pants by Soul Liberated. And so you can see here, I have two here. 
um, and um, I will insert a picture here of me wearing the yellow tank with the yellow pants which was kind of my wearable twall of the entire outfit um, that I will be wearing at Rhinebeck which is actually going to be the blue version of the blue tank and the blue pants and then I will have a cardigan that I wear over that. Um, I am filming a making journal for that one so keep an eye out. That one will go up the Saturday of Rhinebeck weekend uh, which I believe is October the 20th. Um, so whatever day that is, um, that is the episode that's going to go up that day. Um, so I have them on one hanger. I need to get some like, because I have like this, these slimline velvet hangers and I need to get the clips for them. I just never got around to it. Um, so let me separate these two and I will show you the yellow pair first, which are the ones that I completed first. Um, and so you'll notice here that I did not, um, I haven't reinforced the elastic waistband yet, um, because I wanted to make sure that I was comfortable with the width of elastic that I use, especially because, um, sometimes your elastic will shrink a little bit once you wash your pants. Uh, which I have actually washed these. I just ironed them for today's episode. Um, and sure enough, the elastic did shrink a bit. Um, so I kind of cut it a little bit wider. I think like an inch or two wider than I wanted the final. Um, and they were still comfortable, but they were definitely like more comfortable and like snug, I would say. Um, so I didn't do the reinforcement just because just in case I wanted to cut them down a little bit more. But I think I am ultimately happy with the width of elastic that I went with. Um, so I will probably uh, put in those reinforcement stitches. Um, and what that does is it just helps for the elastic not to um, spin inside of your waistband. Uh, but this is what they look like. Um, and again, I've inserted that picture. They have the patch pockets in the front. So here's what that looks like, and the patch pockets in the back, and then they have this really cool pleat. I did the barrel leg, so it has this really nice pleat at the bottom. So I guess I will go into the details. So um, I, I was going to say I knit. I made up the size 18. Um, which is not the recommended size. I think the recommended size for me was like 20 or 22. I've mentioned this in my last episode. Um, I, I find that so liberated bottom patterns at least. Um, I, I don't think that I've made any of their top patterns. Um, but their bottom patterns are in the larger size range. They're skewed. Um, for the larger size ranges. And so I recommend and I personally make the size based on the finish measurement other you know instead of the size recommended for my body measurements I um and actually I will show you why um with the last object that I have to show you today but I think um for me it is recommended to make these in a size 20 um and I made the size 18 um, and again, I should say I made these as a wearable twall, um, and I just happened to have bought the three yards of fabric that the pattern calls for, and I had enough pattern or enough fabric left for the tank, so I ended up making the whole outfit because I did intend on making these as a wearable twall. So again, this is the Joanne Linen Look fabric, which um, is again 85% rayon, 15% um, linen. And um, I used two and one third yards of fabric for these pants. So for my size, for size 18, it's recommended to use three yards. I only use two and a third. Um, and again, this is based on my modification. So I like to say that so that, you know, you don't necessarily not buy enough fabric, but I like to note it so that when I make them again, I know not to buy so much fabric. So in terms of my modifications, I did decrease the rise of the pants um, 
by one and a half inches um, because otherwise the crotch would have been way too low um, for me. And then I also decreased the length on these by four and a half inches. Um, in terms of my waist elastic, I cut it to um, 36 inches. And then when you sew the waist elastic, you lose two inches. So you always cut your waist elastic two inches longer than you need because you have the overlap that you need to do. Um, so I cut my waist elastic to 36 inches. And so for reference, I believe my waist, depending, and so this is where I think part of the issue too comes with me with fit is that my hips are quite large so my hips are like about 47 but I do have a small a much smaller waist my waist is about 35 36 um so what else to say about that um so yeah so those were the modifications for this size 18 um one and a half inches from the rise, four and a half inches off the length. And um, yeah, so for reference also, I am 4'11 and a half. Um, and this pattern is drafted for someone who is 5'5. Five five. So I always uh, shorten it. Um, so then for the second pair, very similar. And I haven't worn these yet. And I actually just finished sewing in the waist elastic today. Um, so again, I still haven't um, done my reinforcement stitches. I'll probably wash these once before I go ahead and do my reinforcement stitches for the waistband. Um, and so again, this is that linen cotton from Kaufman. And this one is a little bit of a sturdier linen than the, um, than the Joanne uh, linen look. Uh, so this is a, a heavier weight. And so let's see. You can see that nice crispness. Oh, and I should say this is view B. Um, so there are three views with this pattern. There is a wide leg, which is view A. View B is the barrel leg. And then view C is the shorts. So this is view B. Um, so again, I did uh, size 18 for this one. Um, I don't have FO pictures of this yet, but it, they look exactly the same, more or less. Um, so again, that rise um, modification was perfect. So I didn't make any changes to the rise. Um, so it's one and a half inch is that I cut off the rise. And then I did find that it wasn't necessarily the, the legs were too short, but for a fall pant, if I wanted to wear it with my, uh, like my Chelsea's or something like that, I wanted the leg to be just a tiny bit longer. So for this one, I just shortened the leg by three and a half inches instead of four and a half inches. So that gives me a total of five inch total off of the um, length of the pants. So the one and a half plus the three and a half, um, which makes sense since I'm about four eleven and a half. And um, the pattern is is uh, designed for five five. Um, I will say for my body measurements also, um, a lot of the times you'll notice or not you'll notice, but I have noticed I do have to take off a bit off the rise and then um, less off of the length when I do that because I actually have a short torso and long leg legs compared comparatively. So a lot of the times I have to do a lot more shortening modifications for tops than I do for bottoms. Um, and then again, that's why I have to shorten the rise on pants because I have a teeny tiny little torso. So if I don't, then the pants would have been like to my boobs. <laughs> um, so that's why I shorten the rise on these. Um, funny enough, I don't think I've ever shortened the rise on my Aeronite pants. Um, no, I, I do know that I have not shortened the rise on my Aeronite pants. So I don't know if the rise on this one just comes up a lot more, but that is something that I noticed when I was cutting the pattern. I was just like, whoa, this rise is like way too big for me. And um, so yeah, so that's why I went ahead and shortened it and it worked out perfectly.
perfectly. I kind of just eyeballed it, like put the pattern up to my body um, and figured out how much I had to modify. And that's why these yellow ones were my wearable 12. And then the blue ones are the final um, sort of project, if you will. Okay, so the next pattern I have to show you is the Hannah Wrap Dress by By Hand London. Unfortunately, I don't have a picture of me wearing this just yet. Um, I did wear it to our cousin's wedding, which was a couple weeks ago, and that's why I sewed up this dress. Um, and yeah, this is what it looks like. It's just, you know, the bottom is just kind of like a straight bottom. Um, it has pockets. And it is just, you know, a wrap dress. It is um, nice that it has a sort of two darts. It has your, your side dart here, and it does have a waist dart. And then it does have some waist darts in the back as well. Um, and then I chose to make the uh, tulip sleeve option for this dress. Okay, I had to change my battery. But um, again, this is the Hannah Wrap Dress by By Hand London. I made the size, I forget what the UK size correlation is, but it is the US 16. Um, this dress pattern, you can do either tulip sleeve or bishop sleeve. You could do a short or a midi length skirt. Um, so I did tulip sleeves with a midi length skirt. Um, and yeah, so, and I made whatever the cats on the bed were shaking the camera. <laughs> well, this is where we got to it. Um, but what was I saying? I made the tulip sleeve with the midi length skirt, um, in the size 16. And so this is what it looks like. Um, modifications. I did shorten the arm side by one and a half inches. Um, and then I also lengthened the bodice by one and a half inches. Now, for next time when I make this dress, I still will keep, I actually, the arm side fit me perfectly. Um, but I will lengthen the body by half an inch instead of one and a half inches. Um, and the reason why, I think I had initially estimated needing one and a half inches because my twill fabric that I was using, um, which I ultimately didn't even finish making because I was in a time crunch to make the dress, um, was a lot lighter. It was like a double gauze, so it wasn't as heavy. And so this is a much heavier linen. So this is um, a, let me see, what do they call it? Uh, let's see. It is a Slub Linen Rayon Blend from Joanne again, and so it's 85% rayon, 15% linen, um, and it does have like that slubby textured um, feel. And this is the same fabric that I made my Sovi dress from the last episode, and this poor tie is coming undone here. Um, but this is the same fabric that I made my cream Sovi dress that I showed you all in the last episode and I think I mentioned in that one too that it is quite heavy um so I don't think that I needed as much in the waist it was still comfortable but it was definitely a little bit lower than I would have wanted it to be and then also because of that I think it ended up and sort of the lengthening it by so much it also extended my wrap quite a bit so it actually ended up being just a tiny bit too loose for comfort. Um, and the way, the reason I say that is it wasn't uncomfortable. Um, it wasn't like so big that it was uncomfortable, but I mean, I didn't want it to be tight, but I also, um, it was just loose enough that I kind of just felt myself just flowing in the dress um and so especially because it's a wrap dress where you know you're kind of 
at least me, I'm very busty. I was kind of concerned about, you know, is it going to be too loose and sort of gape open? Um, that was kind of the reason why it was just a tiny bit too loose for comfort. So I am going to try to go back and see what modifications I can do to this one to bring it back in um, or to bring it in a little bit more. But um, you know, unfortunately, I was just pressed for time and I didn't have an adequate amount of time to twall it. Um, and so yeah, I had five yards of this fabric and I used every last bit of it. So I had initially intended to make the bishop sleeves and then ultimately decided that because I made such a large modification to the so the arm side, I would have to make obviously the modification to the sleeve and I didn't want to, you know, I didn't have the time. Oh, there goes the camera again. I didn't have um, the... Oh my gosh, it's like a Z over here. I went ahead and closed the windows. Um, but yeah, so where was I? So yeah, so I initially was planning on making the bishop sleeve, decided that I was not going to make the bishop sleeve um, because of the modification to the arm side. And then um, made the tulip sleeve, but ultimately, I literally use like every last bit of the five yards so I wouldn't have been able to make the bishop sleeve either so I actually am planning on properly twalling this dress and I do want to make a version for my cousin's wedding that is going to be next year in the Dominican Republic. We're going to all fly down there. It's gonna be a May wedding. So I'm going to be on the lookout for like a nice flowy floral rayon fabric. Um, and then in that case, I do wanna make, you know, that bishop sleeve to be more of a statement piece. Um, my husband's family is also much more laid back. <laughs> so this was kind of fit more the theme of their wedding than, um, you know, my cousin's wedding, which is going to be like super over the top and uh, crazy Latin family shenanigans. Um, but yeah, so I told you the size, I told you the modifications, and yeah, I guess those are the modifications that I'll make next time, is just um, the arm side actually fit me perfect, but I will re um, increase the length of the bodice by half an inch as opposed to one and a half inches the next time that I make it. Okay, and so the last pattern that I have to show you, or project I should say, that I have to show you is technically not a finished project. It is an alteration. And that is my estuary skirt by So Liberated. And you can hear the cat doing things in the background. This is why I usually lock him out of the room. <laughs> But it is what it is. So yes, the So Estuary Skirt by So Liberated. You can see the patch pocket here. Um, has these beautiful wooden buttons. And yeah, so this was my first ever So Liberated pattern. And this was the pattern that made me realize that So Liberated's uh, sizing in their bottoms is a little wonky. Um, at least when it comes to my body. Um, I don't recall the fabric that I use. This is like a linen look or a linen blend or linen something um, from Joanne. It might not be even a linen. It might just be like a polyester like linen look. But it's actually quite heavy. It is so it's a medium weight fabric. It's like really beautiful. And so for this one... Um, I was between sizes at the time, um, between the 18 and the 20, so I decided to size up because I didn't really know too much, although I really shouldn't have because just thinking about the fact that, um, you know, I had an elasticated waistband, but also I was very new in my sewing journey still when I made these, so I made this skirt three years ago, so I made the skirt in November of uh, 2020 so it's still very new in my sewing journey and 
yeah, so I made the size 20 and really I should have gone for like the size 18 and at that time we got rid of the cat. <laughs> Um, so yeah, so at that time I really should have gone for the size 18 and even then now that I know the sizing I really should have done the 16. Um, I haven't looked at the size chart recently. Um, I do plan on making this again this fall. Um, so I will be looking at that. So I actually may still stick with the size 16. But to tell you sort of, to show you kind of the size discrepancy, this was way too big for me three years ago, and I've since gone up about two dress sizes since then. And this was still too big for me. So that's how large it was. Um, so I finally took the time to unpick the back um, elastic. I also chose at that time, it was a waistband elastic, but I think I have found, I found one that I like much better since then um, because it did stretch quite a bit when I put in my reinforcement stitches. Um, so I did change the type of waist elastic that I use, but to, t to t show you how big of a difference um, it is, I actually cut, I cut this waist elastic four inches shorter than the other waist elastic and I probably could have done another inch less so I probably could have done more like five inches less so I had cut the original elastic to 20 inches and so I cut this one to 16 inches and I probably could have done 15 inches but 16 inches was the most that I could stretch it out and actually be able to fit the back panel of the skirt without having to actually make any modifications to the back panel of the skirt. Um, so it still fits me comfortably. It is a teensy tiny bit loose, but if I tuck something in, it'll be fine. Or if I have tights on um, underneath, it should be fine. Um, and so yeah, so that is the alteration that I made to this is I just unpicked the um, elastic and I swapped out I used a whole new elastic and um, shortened that by quite a bit so I absolutely love this skirt I'm really excited that now after three years I can finally wear the skirt and honestly it was the fact that you know and it took me almost the whole day and I'm quickly losing light so I want to finish this up but it took me almost the whole day to unpick the stitches on this and then you know actually um, go ahead and sew it back in so it wasn't a feat for the faint-hearted but um, I'm really excited that I was able to do that and not I did it not only because I actually want to wear the skirt but also as you all know I'm going to Rhinebeck and the weather Rhinebeck weekend could really you know vary it could be really warm or it could be really cold and so I wanted to have this as a warm weather option so I have I'm planning on taking this one with my summer ranunculus in case it is too warm to wear any of my sweaters so yeah I've talked on for quite a bit um, I didn't think that it was gonna take me this long to get through all of this but um, those are all of the projects that I made since July um, and then I do still have my two works in progress from last time are still the same, which is the flint pants that I have cut out, um, which those I actually do plan on finishing because they're the perfect sort of fall pant. Um, so now that I've finished all of my light colored um, sewing, I'm actually going to change out my serger thread. That's what I was actually waiting for to change out my serger thread um, so that I can make those. Um, and then I still have to sew on the buttons on my um, on my Austin um, dress, like sort of the tunic version that I made on that one. Although that's probably not gonna happen anytime soon because at this point it is no longer tank top weather <laughs> um, or tank dress weather, I should say. Um, so I will get into my making plans. I don't tend to make as much in the fall winter months, but I do have a few things that I want to sew up, um, specifically because my husband and I will be moving at the end of our lease. 
Um, and I'm really, really working on stashing down or going through my stash and, and making things up. My fabric stash is pretty large. Fabric takes up quite a bit more space um, than yarn because you can only fold it down so much. So yeah, so I have some fabric stash that I want to work through and um, yeah, so that we're not moving with tons of stuff. But um, the first thing I want to show you is actually a funny story. I was watching um, Stephanie of Edible Thought Makes' um, latest episode of We Are Really Great Friends. I hope that we could meet in real life one day, but we're really great buddies online. And she recently made a pair of hinterland dresses, or she it was a modification where she hacked the so liberated metamorphic and the so liberated hinterland dress patterns um, to make dresses in um, a Joanne one hundred percent brushed cotton. And so she has one in like this really bright, beautiful plaid and then a herringbone. Um, and watching that episode, and this is where kind of my problem comes in with stashing fabric, which is just as bad as my stash of yarn, I had completely forgotten that I had that fabric in my stash until I saw her make that dress. So this is 100% brushed cotton um shirting so let's see here we go so it's 100 brushed cotton shirting and it has this really beautiful herringbone very slight herringbone pattern um and i have this in this uh dark gray color and the reason i wore my cielo dress today is because i bought this fabric two years ago two years ago on sale when it was on sale specifically because I wanted to make a fall winter version of the Cielo dress so I have pulled it out I actually had to go into my husband's closet in the back of the closet in a back corner there's a box that I had some fabric in and I just went through it and I dug it out and so I will be making myself a Cielo dress out of this um, fabric um, for the fall and winter and I'm really excited for that and then the other fabric that has been staring at me for quite some time this is the Figo Harmony Crosses this is a uh, linen cotton blend and I had purchased this also years ago because I'd initially meant to make the Wolferk dress by Jacqueline C. Slack out of this one. Um, so I have quite, quite a bit of this um, in here. Um, I'd have to measure it, but I probably have at least four yards, if not five yards of this um, in my stash. And I decided ultimately after seeing the fabric, um, and kind of like the weight of the fabric it is a little bit of a weightier fabric that it didn't make sense for that dress um so actually i am going to make myself an estuary skirt out of this fabric it is a medium weight so i think it'll be nice to give me a nice sort of a sturdy skirt and then um with this fabric it's very neutral so i think it'll look really great with tights um like with my tights and loafers uh for the fall and then, you know, obviously a nice cream color will will take you year round. Um, so that's my plan for this one. And I'll probably have more to make even more out of this one. We'll see how much I have left over depending on how much fabric I have. So yeah, so those are my plans. Um, I need to finish those pants that I have cut out. And then I have to, or I don't have to, but I plan on making another estuary skirt and another cielo dress. Um, and I do have a bunch of um, like knitting project bag patterns that I have in the pike. So um, you will see those on my knitting episodes. Um, not this knitting episode that's coming up, but in my November podcast episode, I'm sure you'll see a few project bags that I finished um, in that episode. 
So um, if you have made it this far, I hope that you enjoyed today's content. If you have, please be sure to give this video a like. And if you haven't already, please be sure to subscribe to the channel and click that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a video. Um, again, my content varies. It's usually knitting, but sometimes I do have the sewing um, and also like little making journals and things like that that I post. Um, and yeah, I hope that you are enjoying the beginning of fall. I think we're having a little bit of a warm spell this week coming up for the first week of October as we do here in the Northeast, but the weather is definitely starting to cool down and it is definitely sweater weather. I'm really excited. Um, I actually had to change out my shoes. <laughs> this past week because I did not have any uh, cold weather appropriate shoes to go into the office. Um, and yeah, I guess I will see you in the next one. Next week I will have a knitting podcast episode and I'll have a few other uh, Rhinebeck related content later this month. So I uh, hope that you're well, you're taking care of yourself uh, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.